Hi, my name is Daniel Burrows, and today we're going to look at the photograph and how to use it in social studies um, as a source. So the, the chapter by Derek Sayer really focused on overall, was this a, is the photograph a document or is it art? And I would argue that maybe it's somewhere in between. So what we're looking at here is a uh, photograph, supposed to be um, one of the first photographs in 1826 um, or 1827, I'm not quite sure, by this guy in France named Nipsey, um, and it's called View from the Window at La Grasse. And as you can see here, this was an eight hour exposure. So we've, we've gone a long way from then. But from the, from the first, the photograph has really um, changed the way we view historical documents. Um, we have this idea that a photograph can't lie, but we're going to explore that in a little bit. So here's a quote by this um, guy, Laszlo Maholi Nagy in 1927. And he said, the illiteracy of the future will be ignorance of photography. Um, and this picture here is some images from Arab Spring. And as you can see, um, the, the advent of the photograph, the advent of the still image, really captures a spirit of a revolution here in particular. Um, and just the fact that almost everybody who has a phone has a, a camera in their pocket at any given point makes it, we're, we're in a new phase in history where anybody can be taking documents and, and have them last almost eternal as far as the internet goes. So these are some uh, images here, and as you can see, everybody has their phones out and they're all documenting what's going on around them. So it's almost the public has, has not had that voice in, in history, and for the first time we do here. And a photograph really captures the spirit where words may, maybe do not. So we can all enjoy in these pictures, even though we do not speak maybe the language or know the culture. All right. So here's a, another... Um, kind of example of where the photograph can go bad and it's this um, idea of a cliche where a, a photograph can be rendered useless based on the use and use and use of it so this photograph here is um, supposed to be the most widely published photograph of all time and it's called Migrant Mother I'm sure you've seen it by Dorothea Lang uh, in 1936 and it's supposed to depict a, a pea worker in the depression um, and the anguish and the heartache of a mom maybe not able to provide for her kids. But we have this idea that photographs in history are kind of used and used and used where the power of it is destroyed. Um, you can think of any, well not any, but if you can think of um, some Holocaust images, the, the idea is the same, where the same images are used and used to, to the point of um, being numb. So that's just something to look out for with using photographs. Um, but there's this idea that if a picture tells a story, um, thousands tell quote unquote the story. So there's this uh, art exhibit called Here is New York and it's remembering September 11th. Um, and these pictures here, uh, September 11th it is a, an iconic photographed event, um, mainly because it's a modern event, a modern travesty in, in a very populated city of New York where a lot of photographs exist of it. So these people, um, the curators of the exhibit, took all kinds of different photographs from all over, um, from the really um, highest of tech to the lowest of tech, and composed them all to tell this story. So this is more or less the zeitgeist that we're talking about and it's capturing the event of September 11th through all these images. Pretty powerful stuff here. So the other thing here is um, the quote, the camera expands our vision but it does so only on condition that when we see it is no longer the thing itself but it's dead and deading image. So we have this idea that the, the image created is something unto itself. And this is a famous um, picture in the Vietnam War by Nick Ut in 1972 called Napalm Girl. And the idea is that um, regardless of how you feel, this, this anguish of this naked girl um, is very powerful. And it, it, 
it totally goes beyond what we know of the war and reading about the war. It's we're seeing the emotion. So another um, use of photograph in social studies, this is Jacob Rise, um, pretty famous, and he took photographs and was one of the first people to uh, document the conditions of the city. And, and now we're you know, very familiar with these as historians, but this shows that photographs can, can be a true sense, a, a historic document. So he did, um, Jacob Rise was, was one of the first to really, um, for historians, put it out there in 1888. And here are the sleeping conditions. Um, next, we're going to see how uh, photographs kind of, well, well, the quote here says, photographs not only freeze time, they abstract from the very dimension in which human lives are lived. So this is an interesting story. This is um, in the 1968 Olympics, and the two runners, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, are giving the quote-unquote uh, black power salute. The later saying in, in his book it wasn't a, a black power thing, it was a human uh, power thing. And the third guy there is a white runner um, from Australia, and he, believe it or not, is actually wearing um, a, a, a black power uh, emblem on, on his chest, too, kind of solidarity. But this is one of those uh, times where an image is really telling of an experience. And this experience lives on. And it can tell us a lot about the time and the place and the movement. And it's all captured there and, and still. So there's this quote, um, we can only capture what the camera is capable of. And as we'll see in history, as the camera is improved, We'll, we'll see the quality of pictures change, but also the, the manipulation of the pictures has changed. So this is a panoramic of Prague. Um, Joseph Sudek, he uh, spent his whole life kind of um, taking panoramics of his hometown here. And what we see is just this amazing um, feat of pushing the boundary of what the camera is capable of doing. And we're going to see that throughout in this next picture here by Ansel Adams. This is a picture in um, uh, uh, Yellowstone of the mountains, the Tetons, and the Snake River below here. And what Ansel Adams does is pushes the boundary of, of the camera, and he's actually distorting uh, reality as far as what the human eye would be able to see and what we see here in the photograph. Um, the normal human eye cannot see this distance and keep it in focus. You either see the foreground or the background or, or the contrast or not. Um, and what Ansel Adams does um, very beautifully is show that through, through techniques that he taught himself, he is able to show the mountains and the, and the foreground. And then in the, in the background there, you see the mountains and in the foreground, you see the river and all are in focus. So this technique is going to start distorting the reality of what a picture is. Where it used to capture an image in time or place, now we're seeing um, really the technique changing to show us a, a, an above, a heightened reality. So the other thing with photographs is it, it definitely is a language. It shows us what it uh, connotes and denotes. So the photographs conjure up um, what the photograph conjures up uh, is as significant as what they portray. Um, so that means it doesn't really, it, it's more about what you feel, what you're getting out of it, the context, as, as more or as much as what it's actually showing, what it's denoting. So here is a, um, a little boy, and he's trying to help his um, alcoholic father up. Now, you could see this picture. And it's showing a very specific thing, but it can conjure up a lot of different emotion in you. It can um, connote a lot of different um, things about maybe poverty or, or maybe the father-son relationship or responsibility or maturity or masculinity or alcoholism or, you know, a million other things. And what it's actually just showing is a little boy helping up a, a man. Um, but you can read into this a lot more. And then with the hat on the ground and the symbol of authority falling, it, it, there's a lot to this picture and, and pictures in general that you can read into. Um, next here, we have this idea that pictures show the truth, um, that they're a, a encapsulation of something in time and thus they're um, unbiased. 
which is not true. Um, what it recalls is completely ignorant of what it depicts. So here is two pictures by Roger Fenton, who um, took pictures of the Crimean War in 1854. Um, and these pictures are called the Valley of Shadow of Death. And in the one picture on the left here is, uh, quote unquote, the undoctored. And in the right here, we have um, kind of more cannonballs. Uh, or sorry, the other way around. Uh, you can see if you, if you look on the, um, the road there, there's a lot more cannonballs on the left. So the idea is that he's staging this photo to show us what war is like. Part of this is because of the technology. You couldn't take active pictures at the time. Um, and part of it is, you, you, you know, the, the photograph is, is, or the artist, Roger Fenton, is trying to portray something that is not depicted. Um, he's trying to show this more aggravated version of war. So the overall question remains is, are photographs um, more document or more art? And I would argue that as you look at a photograph, you need to see the context. So this is a famous National Geographic cover from 1984 called Afghan Girl. Um, and depending on how you look at this, you could look at it as it a beautiful piece of art, absolutely. Or you can look at it as a, a document of an uh, Afghan girl in um, Pakistan in a refugee camp and, you know, tattered clothes and her story and a lot of other things. Um, and this other picture here I'm going to show in a second, I think really pushes that boundary of document or art. Um, this is a really powerful image. This is a, a photograph by Richard Drew, who, who is a photographer by profession. And obviously this is in September of 2001. And it's called Falling Man. Um, and really, it it's, um, pushes the boundaries of beauty and tragedy as far as pictures go. It, it, the man falling um, is obviously falling from the World Trade Centers. And uh, he's, he's splitting the image right in the middle. On one side is the North Tower. On the other side, on the right side, is the South Tower. Um, and he's at peace, some say, compared to other pictures of people falling. Um, some say floating, some say flying, but there's, there's a type of serenity in this picture that really, I think, pushes it to art. In fact, Richard Drew took um, thousands of pictures that day, and he was going um, back over his pictures looking for, you know, a good one, what he had, and came upon this one, and he stopped his search, and he just, he, he knew um, this was going to be an image that would really tell the story of, of that day for him. So, um, as we look at Photographs. Um, there's a couple of historical guides that, or um, analysis guides that I found online. Um, two places I found some are the National Archives and Library of Congress. Um, this first one here, it, I took it in two spots, um, two parts. So this is from the National Archives. Um, for the first part, they would like you to study the photo um, and then kind of give your impressions of it and then chart what's going on. So if we were studying, um, you know, this photo, we would say what's going on, what we see, what we would infer, or what we would infer, maybe from the date and, and the title and all those kind of things. Um, next, you make um, in inferences um, on what you observe. So if that's 2001, I can infer that that's probably September 11th, the man's falling, those are probably the World Trade Centers behind him. And then what questions does this photograph raise in your mind? If I was a student, I would think, well, why is he falling? Why did, why did he fall? Um, why is he at peace? Uh, well, a million other things. Um, and then where would I find these answers? Well, these are hard to look up. Um, but I could start by looking at interviews or, or looking up eyewitnesses or um, looking at the documentation of the day or from first responders, a lot of different things. Um, this next an, uh, analysis is from the Library of Congress. Slightly different way to look at pictures. Uh, you have your observation, your knowledge interpretation, and then what further research you know. And this is another one from Library of Congress. And I, this is if you're going to do a research with it. So you have to contextualize with time, place, people, event. And these will all be in the Moodle, by the way. And then you have to uh, further find analysis and try to find your, um, your, your sources if you were looking it up. So you, this uh, analysis of where does this photograph fit into the broader event of the time period? This is a good periodization question that you'll see in a lot of AP questions. Um, so if we're doing this, we could say, you know, this is the start of the war on terror. 
1984, you know, a lot of disturbance in the Middle East, uh, Crimean War.